There's no doubt that bush flying, that's flying tough built airplanes in and out of dirt runways with sometimes unpredictable conditions, is some of the most fun you can have in commercial aviation. And if you want the best of the best, you'll need to head to Africa. Watch this video to see how to fly out on safari, get a sense of why you should do it, and I'll even give the whole thing a Jeb score. Hello Jet Setters, I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. This is the Maasai Mara, and there's no better way to get out here than with Air Kenya. Let me show you how it works. The Maasai Mara is a game reserve in Kenya and is one of Africa's most significant wildlife and conservation areas. That makes it also one of the most popular destinations for visitors to this part of the world. It's easy to see why, with animals around every bend only an arm's reach away. But getting here requires most visitors to hop on planes that look like these. While several carriers operate out into Kenya's Maasai Mara, we return to an old favorite for this visit in 2021, Air Kenya. The airline operates both classic and newer prop airplanes and offers a consistent and reliable experience on board. In this video, you'll see exactly what to expect from your own safari experience. Trips out to the Maasai Mara begin at Nairobi's Wilson Airport. Each airline has its own terminal and Air Kenya's is fairly basic. We were most grateful for two things. First, the coffee shop where we had a quick bite to eat before our early morning flight out. And second, the great views out of the massive windows. The waiting area is pretty basic. It includes bench seats and a TV. Now the TV plays a series of videos about Air Kenya, including one by a familiar face. That's me. <laughs> you see, we flew Air Kenya back in 2018 and made a video. It's now part of the free flight entertainment. I'll link to that video below. Passengers receive receipts for boarding. And I must say, boarding an Air Kenya flight from Wilson Airport is really an event. Let's face it. The destinations are magical, and it's hard to hide the maximum level of enthusiasm nearly everyone feels here. We headed out to the Dash 7, which began service in 1982 with the predecessor to one of my all-time favorite airlines, Piedmont. It's based near my home in the southeastern United States. As an aviation enthusiast, it's great to see this airplane still safely operating. The seating on board is pretty simple, but works just fine for a short flight like this one. It'll only take us 35 minutes to reach our first stop, and like Southwest Airlines, you pick whichever seat you want. There's a sturdy tray table, much sturdier in fact than the last time I flew on this very airplane with Air Kenya. There's plenty of room under the seat in front of you, which is good because of the luggage policy here on Air Kenya, but more about that in just a few minutes. After a short taxi past some much older airframes, we were on our way out to the Mara. Driving from Nairobi out to the Mara could take around six hours, so a 35-minute flight makes a lot of sense for visitors like us, who are short on time and excited to start their safari. Each seat has an individual air vent, called a gasper, and a reading light. The windows could use some polishing, but I distracted myself with the catering, a bottle of water provided at boarding. There's an ashtray, which should go unused throughout the entire flight, word to the wise. <laughs> we soon began our approach into our first stop. Air Kenya has an unusual operation. Each day is different, and your experience depends on where the other passengers are heading. The last time we flew with Air Kenya, we made several stops, but on this flight, we were told to get out here at the first stop and board another airplane. And just as we've been told, this Cessna Grand Caravan touched down on the dirt landing strip just after we did. So we grabbed our suitcases, headed across the runway, and hopped on board. Second flight, let's go. The seating and amenities on this flight were even more spartan than the last one, which was fine since this trip would only take eight minutes, clocking in as the shortest flight we've ever taken. These stops are so short that the pilots of the Dash 7 never even turned off the right engines on the plane. It's important to travel light when heading out here. So let's talk about the packing and luggage requirements here on Air Kenya. Air Kenya makes it clear to passengers that they have different luggage requirements than typical airlines, and seeing the fleet, it's easy to understand why. 
passengers are limited to 33 pounds in soft-sided bags. You can carry 11 pounds in a small bag in the cabin with you, but that's included in your 33 pound limit. Now, nobody ever weighed our bags, but I guess maybe as they loaded, they would have noticed if it was too heavy. Anyway, I'll link to the information about this luggage requirement in the description below. Now, it's worth noting also that there's free luggage storage at Wilson Airport in case you're like us and have more baggage because your trip to the Mara is part of a larger itinerary. We took advantage of that service this time, and it couldn't have been easier. We simply left our bigger bags back at the airport and were given a tag and provided that tag when we got back and got the bags back. Despite the bumps at low altitude, we enjoyed our shortest flight ever. Well, maybe I enjoyed it a bit more than Suzanne did, but it was over before too long. And on the ground, after a smooth as silk touchdown by the pilots, we were greeted with a champagne toast. We waved goodbye to our airplane as it continued its journey and began creating our own Mara memories. These incredible sights and unparalleled experiences will truly stay with us forever. That's not hyperbole. Pro tip, don't wear white sneakers on safari. If you've never gone on safari, it is a travel experience that I recommend everybody uh, do their best to take advantage of. It's so relaxing. It's amazing to be out, um, you know, just within arm's reach of the animals. Not that you should reach out and touch the animals, but they're that close. Is that a wedding ring I see? Yes, um, it's also a stop sign. <laughs> it's only for Suzanne. Unfortunately, as they always do, our three nights passed far too quickly. But the adventure was not over yet. We still had another flight to catch. We had to get back to Wilson. Camp managers understand that Air Kenya's service is a, a little unpredictable, so they'll be in touch with the airline on your day of departure to ensure you don't waste too much time waiting at your airstrip. Now, our flight was scheduled to depart at 11.15, but we didn't actually leave until nearly noon. We did end up arriving at Wilson Airport at 1 o'clock as planned. You see, the Mara is dotted with airstrips, and you'll be delivered to the one closest to your camp. We were the last to get picked up, which meant we flew straight to Wilson. It's important to remember that if you're a queasy flyer, you could end up in a situation where you have multiple takeoffs and landings on dirt landing strips. It's safe, but could be tough for nervous flyers. As we flew out of the Mara, I felt a twinge of sadness. There's just something magical about Kenya. Now, a safari is one of the most powerful, incredible, and, as far as I'm concerned, must-have experiences ever. And this 45-minute flight back to Wilson Airport gave me the chance to reflect not only on our time on the ground, but also on the Air Kenya passenger experience. So, how about a Jeb score? We'll look at five factors and rate the Air Kenya experience with this unscientific analysis. And, as always, we rate the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. I've always said this is subjective, and this rating is going to prove it. I'm not going to compare Air Kenya's passenger experience against, uh, say, Air France's first class. So here goes my attempt to rate Air Kenya. First, the lounge. Well, they don't have one, and even though I wouldn't expect them to, no lounge means zero stars. The seats are exactly what I'd expect for flights like these. They're minimal without a lot of fluff, which is fine, and fine sounds like average to me, which means three stars. The food was basic. So basic, in fact, it was just a bottle of water. I'm not sure if it's COVID-related cuts or something else, but when we flew with Air Kenya in the past, there were little candies passed out. That was no longer the case, at least on our flight, and instead we just received a bottle of water at boarding. I wish they'd bring back the candy, and until they do, it's three stars. In-flight entertainment is non-existent, but with views of the Maasai Mara, even through unpolished, scratched-up windows, I'm not sure you need any. So here's a Jeb score bonus. Five stars because of the unbelievable views out the window. The service was great. The only flight with flight attendants was our first one on the Dash 7 from Wilson. The other planes were just too small to require flight attendants. On those flights, the safety briefing is provided by the first officer, or the captain. Flight attendants don't have much service to provide, uh, but they were very friendly, and when they interacted with us, they were great. And with all the other passengers, too. So if you want to know the secret to five-star service, that's all I really ask for. Just be friendly. So five stars here. 
and that leaves Air Kenya with 16 out of a possible 25 stars. But again, that's exactly what I'd expect for this flight. If they smacked a first class cabin with five stars on one of these planes, it would lose its charm. It just doesn't make sense. Put another way, the lower score should not deter you from flying with them. Instead, it should serve to set expectations. These are really short flights after all. But as for me, I can't wait to fly with Air Kenya again to get out to the Masai Mara. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky. Yeah.